Hello and welcome to lesson 12 in the Python tutorial series. My name is Steve and today we'll be looking at how to create your own user-defined functions. This topic is one of my favorite topics. It allows you to start doing some really cool things in your programs and I guess what it does is it makes some tasks a lot easier. Once you learn how to do functions and once you become effective at it, you'll see that going back and doing things like your guess the number program would be so much easier had you used functions. And at some point we will go back and do that. We're going to create functions that do some simple tasks uh, in the examples this week, like taking the square of a number, defining or returning an area of a, a rectangle or a square, calculating the perimeter of an area, all these things that will serve as pretty good examples of how defining your own functions work. Although they have limited use in actual programs, they're pretty good at getting the concept across. We'll spend some time looking at comments again. It's something that I know I brought up not too long ago. I forget what lesson it was. But when you start writing your own functions, and just about every program you write now will have user-defined functions, it is a good habit to get into to comment every single function you write and start commenting your programs. We're getting to the point where the programs are going to be large enough that comments are very important. We'll be looking at two key words this week as well, the def, D-E-F function. It's a key word that indicates to Python that you're going to be defining your own function. And the return statement. The return statement is a often confused statement for beginning programmers. The return keyword just indicates what a function is going to be equal to or indicates to Python what value the function should return. Hopefully by the end of this lesson you'll understand that a little bit better. But the return statement gets confused with the print statement an awful lot by beginning programmers and we'll try our best to make sure that when we leave this lesson everybody knows the difference between the return statement and a print statement. So that's going to be it for the introduction. Let's go ahead and get started today. Okay, so I'm going to head over to my programming window here on the right, and I'm going to write the most simple function that I can think of. I'm going to write a function that takes a number and raises it to the power of two, or one that squares a number. And that function definition would look like this. I'm going to write the DEF keyword. I'm going to name my function. It's going to be named square. And I'm going to provide the parameters that this function will use. In this case, I need one parameter called num. And I'm going to put that in a block of code. Think of parameters like this. What information do I need in order for my function to work? If I'm going to square a number, I need to know what that number is. So I need to provide that information to my Python function. I can't square a number unless I tell Python what number I want squared. The next thing you always want to do when creating your own functions, every single time, you're going to write at least a one-line comment. It can be simple, but you're going to want to write a comment to let you know what the function does. This is the best habit that you can get into as a programmer, is commenting your program. So this function that I'm writing will take a number and return the square of that number. And then what I want to do is I want to return num raised to the power of 2. And that's all there is to it. So we've defined a function. We've named it square. We've provided a number to be squared, and then the function has one line in it. It's going to return our number raised to the power of 2. Now, if I go over here to my Python shell, I'm going to try and run this bit of code, square, and I'm going to take the square of 5. But I get a name error. Square is not defined. That's because while I did write the function, and it is technically correct. I never ran this program, which means the shell doesn't have access to anything that I wrote over here until I execute the program. So I'm going to hit F5, 
I'm going to save it as old test.py. It's going to execute, and now Shell should have access to each and every function that I have over in my programming window. So now when I type square of 5, I get 25. When I type square of 3, I get 9. Square of 9 is 81. So my function is working correctly. A very important distinction to keep in mind when you define a function over here, that num that's highlighted on the screen right now is a parameter. At the time you've defined a function, you tell the function what parameters do you need or what information do you need for this function to run. So in a function definition, this right here is called a parameter. When I run the function, when I'm providing that information and when it's being executed, this is called an argument. I am providing an argument to my function. What Python is doing is it takes my argument, in this case, 9, and it replaces that 9 in my parameter. So for the execution of this function one time, this line of code, this square of 9, instructs Python to run the user-defined function square once. It will take the argument, 9, and replace it with num for that one time and that one time only. It will then return, in this case, 9 raised to the power of 2, and return 81, but after this is done executing, the 9 goes away. The function sits there and waits for new information, a new function call with a new argument. And that's why we can do a square of 5, 3, and 9, because every time it executes this line, it forgets the argument. It's, it's executed, it's returned a value, it's done. So let's say I want to take a cube of a number. I'm going to define cube of num. I'm going to take a number and return the cube of that number. And I'm going to return num raised to the power of 3. Run this program and see square of 9 is 81. The cube of 9 is 729. The square of 3 is 9. The cube of 3 is 27. Because Python forgets, but it doesn't necessarily forget, but that's probably the best term that we've got at this point. Once it's done executing a function once, it forgets all the variables. They're called local variables. And in a future lesson, we'll talk about the difference between local and global variables. But the reason we can use num as a parameter here and num as a parameter here is they're not like variables. We're not erasing num. If I had, say, over here, I say, well, OK, I want num to equal 3, and then I want num to equal 2, it's going to forget this original num equals 3. You don't necessarily have that program in functions because Python is forgetting this information anyway. Once this function executes once, num over here is just gone and it's waiting for a new function call with a new argument so it can run once. So you can use the same kind of variable names in your functions. It won't matter because the function just executes once. Okay, so using what we have here, I'm going to do my best to explain what the difference between a print statement and return statement is. This is something that beginning programmers, and particularly the beginning programmers in my class, really struggle with, is what is the difference between a print statement and return statement? So let's take a look at a couple of examples. So over here in my shell, uh, I, I cleared the screen, so I'm going to run a run this window so I have access to square and cube in the shell. Uh, when I explained built-in functions in the last lesson, I said, think of functions as being equal to a single value. That is, if I did a statement such as max of 4, 8, 12, and 3, Python is going to return that as a value of 12. That would be the equivalent of me writing 12. 
And I can check that in the shell by saying the max of 4, 8, 12, and 3, and use a comparison operator and say that is equal to 12. That returns a true statement because this right here, since it evaluates to a value of 12, is simply 12 in Python's eyes, much in the same way that I could say max num equals max of 4, 8, 12, and 3. It will execute that since this is the equivalent of 12. When I run max num or when I check the value of max num, max num is simply equal to 12. It's not equal to this function, it's only equal to the return value of the function. The same is true for my user defined functions. If I said square num is equal to the square of 4, I can see that square num is equal to 16. And I can check that in the same way I did with the max function earlier, and I could say square num is equal to 16 using my comparison operator, and that re returns true. So square num equals 16. Yeah, I could change the value of square num. I could say square num is now equal to the square of 3. Whoops. Well, I mean, that's a good example right there. Square num is 16. So is that equal to the square root of 3? It's not. Uh, what I wanted to do, though, was square equals square of 3, and I've changed the value of square num to 9. So this user-defined function is simply equal to the value of my return statement. So let's uh, create another function, and we'll use a print statement instead of a return statement and take a look at what happens. So I'm going to find a new function, and I'm going to call it alternate square. And it's going to take the exact same parameters. It's going to take a number and print the square of that number. So it's going to do the same thing, except instead of using a return statement, we're going to use a print statement. So instead of return, I'm going to print num raised to the power of 2. Let's go ahead and run this program. So I'm going to run square of 4. And I get a 16. I'm going to run my alternate square program that uses the print statement, and I get a 16. And this is where a lot of the beginning programmers start to get thrown off, you say. Well, square gives me a 16, alternate square gives me a 16. I don't understand what the difference between the two is. But look at this really important distinction. If I said the square of 4 is equal to 16, I get true. Those two values are equal. If I said alternate square of 4 is equal to 16. It still prints a 16, but then I get a false. That's because when alternate square is called, when we make this function call, it heads over here and it runs alternate square of 4. The first line of code it encounters is to print the number raised to the power of 2, which is 16, so it did that. It printed 16. The trouble is, because there's no return statement, the value of this function is nothing. So is nothing equal to 16? That's false. Because there's no return statement, alternate square does not retain a value. So if I said is the square of 4 equal to the alternate square of 4, I'm also going to get false. The return statement sets the value of your function. And if you don't have a return statement by default, your function isn't going to be worth anything. You can't do comparisons with it. It's good for one-time printing, but it doesn't retain any sort of value. Another way you can look at that is, let's say I wanted to take um, a variable square of 3, and I'm going to make that equal to my function, my first function that returns a value. Now when I check the variable square of 3, I see that that equals 9. I have set a variable equal to the return value of my square function. But if I did the same thing and I said alternate of 3, and I'm going to set that equal to alternate square, it prints 9. 
But now I want to check the value of the alternative 3. And I can see alternative 3 has no value at all. That's because there was no return statement. It takes some getting used to, and if that doesn't make total sense, you can watch that this part again, or you can ask questions in the comments, but it's very important to know the difference between a print statement and return statement. The only time you'll use a return statement is in a function. The return statement is what sets the value of your function. So you can, when you set it equal to things, when you want to compare things, you need to have a return value to retain that functionality. We're going to go on to some other examples now, um, but keep that in mind. Again, if you have any questions, let me know. I will be happy to help, but getting the difference between a, the print statement and the return statement is an important part of understanding programming and understanding functions. So there's still a lot of things to cover in creating your own functions. Um, we're going to create some functions that have multiple, multiple parameters and do some more advanced functions. But I think we're going to do that in lesson 12.2. Uh, this one's already getting kind of lengthy, and I think we've addressed a really important concept between print and return. So we're going to go ahead and wrap it up here, and we're going to come back in lesson 12.2 and look at some more of the advanced functions. And then we're going to do a challenge program again. So we didn't have one last lesson, but we do have a challenge program this time that is going to uh, allow users to select the parameters of random numbers and have you use their parameters to generate a random number as opposed to predetermining the range of a random number. And we're going to do that through a function. So hopefully you've enjoyed lesson 12.1 on user-defined functions, and I look forward to seeing you for lesson 12.2. Thanks, and have a great day.